Uh, well, first of all, thank you for joining us for Beyond the Podium. We've been doing this for a number of years. I know it's your first time, and we really appreciate it. Um, it's already been a long campaign. We're coming down to the final weeks here in Iowa. What is the plan for you these final weeks to pull off this win? Well, we're going everywhere. We've done all 99 counties. Uh, we're proud to have done the full Grassley. Uh, we have support from people like Governor Reynolds, all these great members of the legislature, and we are campaigning in earnest. We're marshalling more support, getting people to actually commit to caucus. And as you know, it's not just mailing in a mail ballot, it's a process. And so as we go from county to county, town to town, we're adding more. We've got a, a mass army of people that are rearing to go, and we're gonna take that all the way into January 15th, because ultimately, this country needs a change. Uh, I'm a leader who can be a change agent in D.C. I'm the only veteran running for president. I have a record of delivering on 100% of my promises, and now is the time to get results for this country. Uh, the most recent Iowa poll that came out a short while ago did have you gaining support, but it also showed the former president gaining support as well. What's your message to his supporters who don't seem to be convinced that you're a better alternative? Well, a couple things. One, um, you know, we need to win the election, and you know, I think the Democrats have a plan to run against Trump that they have done in the past successfully. Uh, I've shown an ability in a state like Florida to win by historic margins, and we need to bring that uh, to the national. Uh, second, uh, even if somehow Trump could win, he, he can only serve one term. He'd be a lame duck president. We need somebody that can go in there and serve for two terms. Uh, it's a huge difference in terms of being able to get your policies to, to stick beyond your tenure in office. I mean, think back when Biden came in in 2021. He reversed everything Trump did almost on day one, basically. Uh, you don't want to do that. Um, also, you know, I'm somebody that uh, just sees things a little bit differently in terms of, you know, I want to attract support for Republicans. Um, you know, I think he attacks people. He's attacking Governor Kim Reynolds just because she endorsed me. That is not the way you win. You win by bringing people into the fold. So people that are doing great, uh, I want them on the team and that's how you build a majority. Well, and speaking of building a majority, you know, you mentioned uh, President Biden, you say reversing everything on day one. That's what I hear from a lot of Republicans, reversing what Biden did on day one. Isn't the way to avoid that to actually engage with the other side in Congress and enact legislation rather than executive oh, order? Oh, you absolutely have to do and legislation. And how do you do that? Because, you know, you come from a Republican-dominated state as well. How do, you, how do you work with Democrats in order to bridge that divide when obviously it, it hasn't been any wider than it is today? Well, it's interesting, though. Um, Trump really didn't get much done through Congress. He, he did a lot of executive, and the policies were good, the regulatory policies, all that. Biden was able to reverse. Biden, actually, even with 50 senators, he got a lot of his agenda through with budget reconciliation. So I think there's a couple things. There's certain issues like the border and illegal immigration that the Democrats now uh, will have to come to the table on. You see the mayor of New York City. You see a um, uh, uh, governor now of Arizona sending people. So, so there's going to be uh, issues that are very popular with the public, uh, and they're either going to want to play ball or they're going to lose their elections. But then you've got to figure out what can you do through budget reconciliation in the Senate. So everything I talk about on the campaign trail is with an eye towards how do you get it through the process, um, and we will absolutely be ready to go on day one to do that. So our policies are going to stick. Uh, they're not going to be something that can just be reversed. Of course, there is a role for executive orders. We're going to tell certain agencies not to do things that have been harmful, and, and that's fine, but you you got to work with Congress. I, I don't want to seemingly focus on the former president here, but he is the front runner in this race by every poll. Recently, he's been talking about immigrants poisoning our blood, praising communist dictators like Putin and Kim Jong-un. Uh, he's vowed to commute the sentences of those convicted of terrible crimes on January 6th. And he's still lying about the 2020 election. Is this the view you see for the party that you're trying to lead? Well, I've made the point. That's one of the reason I'm running. If this election is about a referendum on Donald Trump and, and, and distractions and all these other issues, uh, that is going to play into the Democrats' hands. Biden will just hang out in the basement. And, of course, it may not be Biden. It may be another Democrat. Uh, and they're not going to have to answer for the things that the American people are dissatisfied about. Uh, with me, the, the issues will be front and center about the, the failures of this administration and about how we have a positive agenda to move the country forward. Uh, I think, and I think even a lot of uh, Donald Trump's biggest supporters will acknowledge, you know, shooting off his mouth, uh, he, a lot of times he's his own worst enemy uh, because he's not disciplined in how he's doing that. This border and illegal immigration is a huge winning issue for Republicans. 
don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot while you're talking about it and then give the media and give the Democrats something else to latch on to, which then may make their position seem like it's not as bad as it really is. Uh, a recent poll found the number one concern among Republican voters in this election is the economy. By most metrics, the economy is strong, unemployment's low, inflation's returned to a more sustainable level, wages have been rising, albeit not as high as, as many would like to see it. But that's been a problem for over 50 years now with wages. What is the plan to change that from continuing? Because this isn't just about one administration's policies. Well, first of all, um, you know, the American public d would disagree with your assessment in terms of how they're feeling. And I think the reason is, is because the cost of what they need to live, groceries, um, mortgage payments, and of course, interest rates have gone up. That's exceeding what any gains they're getting in income and so they're losing ground i mean think about it if you did the average price home today your mortgage payment would probably be twice as much on a monthly basis as the average price home would have been three or four years ago part of its home values have gone up part of it's the inflation but a lot of it's the stiff interest rates it's made it so that uh, attaining a middle class lifestyle is not accessible is that there, was driven but is that there was something that you would have done differently than raise interest rates in order to bring that inflation rate down i wouldn't have supported the policies that um, that led to the inflation i mean they the way they handled covid it goes back to march of 2020 through the first year of the biden administration they just started printing money they used covid as an excuse to turn on the printing presses. And so you did two trillion in March of 2020 under Trump, 2.2 trillion in December 2020 under Trump. Biden did 1.9 trillion with the American Rescue Plan. That's all in one year. So when you're printing and, and creating money basically out of thin air, it's, inflation doesn't happen immediately. You are gonna have it. And the Fed said it was gonna be transitory. So they let it really take off. Then they've been hiking rates and that's been very, very painful for people. So we just have to understand, our, our debt situation, the spending, the interest rates, all that, that, that was created by the political class with choices that they made. And that was both Democrats and Republicans that are responsible. So in Florida, for example, we've cut taxes every year. We've paid down 25% of our state's outstanding debt. Incomes in Florida are actually rising higher than inflation. Our, our uh, unemployment rate is 60% lower than peer states like, like California. So we've shown an ability uh, to get the job done, both in terms of fiscal management and also in terms of having an economy that people want to invest in. You said that immigration is a key focus of your campaign. It was number two on, on the list of Republican priorities, according to the Associated Press poll. The AP just this morning highlighting the rise in border crossings, most uh, being families escaping violence, not just in South America, but also around the world. This is not the first time that millions have looked to America for hope. And time and time again, I read about the backlog that it's putting on the immigration courts. So what is the plan to address that part of this system? Because doesn't the Constitution require us to give these people due process? No, actually, you do not have to let them into the country. I mean, asylum claims, most of these are, are not, uh, do not qualify for asylum. I mean, just leaving a country where there's violence, that, that is not enough. Uh, that's not the same as being persecuted under the law. So they're not going to ultimately get asylum, but they get a, a sheet of paper to say, come do a court date in two or three years. They come to the interior of the country, probably never going to be heard from again. We're going to do remain in Mexico. Uh, you're going to, if you make claims, you remain in Mexico till that claim is adjudicated. We're also going to change the law to clarify so that it's true asylum claims and we're not creating this because this is a whole cottage industry that's been created with what's going on. It's overwhelming the border towns, it's overwhelming our, our society, and it's allowing the Mexican drug cartels to move people in, sex trafficking, human trafficking, they're moving fentanyl in, uh, to the country and that's been very very dangerous so we're going to have a total overhaul on this we are not going to have our border overrun uh, i will build the border well you know donald trump promised that and said he'd get mexico to pay for it if he had done that and fulfilled that promise i don't think you would have had eight million people would have been able to come in and so that's a physical fact of life uh, i'll deliver on that because i'll get on it day one you talk about the fentanyl coming across the border. Uh, by every metric, a lot of that is actually coming through legal ports of entry. So how do you stop something like that that's already getting through some of our most secure checkpoints? Well, it, it, that, there's no doubt it is coming through there, but it's also coming through illegally that is not even detected. Um, you know, I was down at the border uh, a, a couple months ago in, in Arizona. There was actually a place where you had a stretch where there was some of the, some of the metal fencing. Um, and they were big, big metal beams. 
and these guys are down there working on the wall. And I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, we're patching up a hole. They're like, the cartels just cut through it, and then they run people in with the backpacks, and they go, Biden has the Border Patrol in town processing people, not actually on the border. So it is a combination of both. One of the things we're going to do is I'm going to have a maritime task force to interdict some of the precursor chemicals that are going into these Mexican ports because they're, they're getting the precursor chemicals. Cartels are making the fence and all. Then they're bringing it in through a variety of channels. But here's the thing. If, you're, if you have no, uh, you stop the illegal immigration, you will have more resources to be at the ports of entry. I mean, there's threats stretched so thin. It goes also to processing legal immigrants. We don't have the people to do that when you have all this illegal immigration problem. So fixing that is going to let us tackle all these other issues in a much more effective way. Uh, just quickly looking overseas, uh, Ukraine and Israeli funding right now held up because a growing number of Republicans no longer support funding Ukraine. Do you believe the United States still has an obligation there? What we need to be doing, one, you have the primary obligation to defend your own country's borders. And I know that there's a lot of Republicans in Congress that are making the point, wait a minute, Mr. President, you have not done your duty to secure this. We have people coming in from Iran and China and Russia. It is not a good situation at the border. That's a huge security risk. So they're insisting that that problem be solved. I think that's smart. Also, we have sent money to Ukraine for paying salaries for bureaucrats, paying pension payments for retired government officials in Ukraine. Uh, we've done things for, for subsidizing agriculture and, and small businesses over there. That is not appropriate use of, of, of funds. Now, what I would do as commander in chief and as, as a leader in the West, uh, I'd marshal these European countries to meet their obligations uh, for NATO. And I know Ukraine's not in NATO, but they ultimately have the skin in the game vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Uh, if they're not willing to step up, the idea that we have to provide the blanket security, you know, it doesn't make sense. But the Republicans are absolutely right to insist that this border get solved uh, before Biden gets any more money. Do you see a way out of this conflict uh, that ends with Russia gaining any ground? Because that seems to be the underlying issue here is, is preventing Russian aggression. And d does it stop with Ukraine? So here's, uh, I think, from our interest is we don't want to see wars breaking out in Europe. Of course, we don't want to see Russia invading a NATO country. That would end up in, in invoking our uh, rights of, uh, under, under Article 5 of NATO. Uh, I just, um, uh, I think that the current strategy is not working. Uh, I think that this is a stalemate. I think it's likely to continue going in this direction. We also have to look from a national security perspective, what is the top threats facing the United States? And from a nation state perspective, the top threat facing this country is China. We are under-resourced in the Indo-Pacific. Our defense industrial base has basically collapsed. Uh, over the last many years. We don't even produce the type of munitions uh, that we would need. We can't even do enough for Israel um, and what they were giving to Ukraine. So we need to reevaluate how are we going to be able to protect this country. I've put out a, a plan that is going to put our responsibility to check China and the Indo-Pacific first. It's going to ask our European allies to step up and do more. We'll collaborate. We want to be helpful there, uh, but we cannot provide uh, a, a conventional defense umbrella for all of Europe. They, Europe is 10 times more wealthy than Russia. Uh, Europe could do a lot more if they wanted to. Poland's done a lot, Finland, there are some who've done, many have not been willing to do it. Uh, last question, uh, Iowans are gonna see a lot of you in the coming weeks on television, radio, probably in their mail as well. Uh, but let's face it, most people have lives to live. So. I hate to boil everything down and into a shorter, shorter spiel, but you know what? What do you want people to keep in mind about you when they're going to their caucus on January 15th? Well, um, I'm somebody that, that, that's going to fight for them, and, and that's really important because a lot of the Republicans cave and they don't stand up. Uh, I'm going to win for them. Yes, win the election like we did in Florida in record fashion, but win on all these issues. I'm the only one running that's delivered on 100% of my promises. Uh, I've beaten. The, uh, uh, the left in this country on education, on, on COVID, on crime, on all these things. And I have a demonstrated record of doing that. And then I'll provide leadership. 
We need somebody that's going to be able to articulate a vision uh, and then execute on that vision on behalf of the American people. We know we need to reverse the trajectory of this country. Uh, it requires leadership to do it. And as the only veteran running, uh, as the dad of a first grader, kindergartner, and preschooler, um, and as somebody that has actually not just uh, talked the talk but walked the walk, I'm the guy that can get the job done. Governor Ron DeSantis, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.